All right, Shalom, Shalom. First and foremost, I'm going to start off by giving all praises, honor, and glory to the Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son, Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rakaha Kodash. Secondly, I want to give double honors to our apostles, our elders, our bishops here at Great Millstone for teaching us this truth and who rule well. And Shalom to all you brothers across the four corners of this earth pushing this word with all righteousness and sincerity. Shalom, Shalom. All right, it's your brother Kabad from GMS Heaviana 144, GMS South Carolina Midlands Camp, Great Millstone, Ban Yashar Alaban Kabad Page. Coming back with a quick video through the power and the spirit of Yahweh Bashum Yahweh Shai. And Lord willing, I pray this video is edifying and good nourishment to the house of David. And I'll just get straight into this video today. You know, as the scriptures tell us in Romans chapter 13, that it is high time to wake out of sleep because salvation is nearer than we believed. And one key thing. That, that to uh, allow you to make sure that you stay awoke, so to speak, because the scriptures in Isaiah 60, they speak about gross darkness that has overtooken uh, the people and not only the people, the whole earth has been you know, covered in this gross darkness. Now, however, how do you escape that gross darkness? You have to first and foremost, the, the spirit of the Lord has to be supping with you, has to be dealing with you. All right. Uh, uh, Lord willing, you have to be, um, as the scriptures tell us in um, Jeremiah, you have to be with the with the hopes that the Lord has ordained you from the beginning, so since so to speak, so since you were in the womb. Now, um, I said a lot, so let me let me um slow it down a little bit and let me get that Isaiah sixty just for edification's sake, because we always speak about the earth being uh given to the hands of the wicked, pursuing the Job nine to twenty four. But when you read Isaiah chapter sixty, and we we'll read at we we'll start at the top. The scriptures speak about that gross darkness that has that has pretty much that has taken over the earth and, and the mind frames of the people and the people that, you know, that we're concerned about it are just mainly the Lord's people, the Negroes, Latinos and Native Americans. But only at this particular time, we're only concerned about the hopeful, humble, fearful elect, because as we often go into, you have to understand that two thirds of our people are 66.6. .6, and if you round that up, that's to be 70 percent. You can honestly say like 70 percent of our people. All right, don't give a, a, a darn about the return of the Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son, man. All right, their ways are, are fully uh, engaged in the ways of the world. All right, so uh, just, just thinking about it, if you've got three people, all right, and out of every uh, three people, only one of them believe, man. All right, and that's how it is out here in, in, in real time and in real world because one out of every three person hey, uh, uh, is, is only going to pretty much be considering his ways. All right. Like we're just summing it all up. You got three people. Two of them are going to be thinking about mischief and, 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 and folly, man. All right. As the scripture say, folly is said at great dignity, man. All right. And, and our people love to do wickedness, man. All right. Instead of doing righteous, but uh, let's get uh, Isaiah 60. It says, arise and shine. The light has come. The light is come and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. Now it speaks about the light has come. I want to get a quick precept very quickly because um, Yahweh Shai represents the light, man. All right. The light of life, the light of wisdom, the light of knowledge and understanding. All right. And now that we have this glorious gospel, all right, as the scriptures tell us, it, it says uh, uh, we don't walk as children of the night, roughly paraphrasing, man. All right, we have to walk with children of the light. All right. Now, I think about as I'm going to read this precept in John 8 and 12. You know, all these social media platforms and anytime someone's trying to get you to be um, a, a person that's always looking at their, uh, uh, what do you call it, their um, their content, then what do they ask you to do? Hey, follow me, follow me. And then people will be like, oh man, I like his content. I tune into his content or I learn from his content because you become a follower. But going back into, as we may mention, the two thirds, while, while two out of out of every three person, while, while, while they're going to be as as we may mention, folly set in great dignity, and they're going to be doing things concerning of the world. Guess what? That one is going to be doing, representing that one third, and he's going to be doing being a follower of the Lord, man, being a follower of the gospel, uh, pretty much being uh, aware and being uh, a conscience of his life, man. Because at the end of the day, this life that we live in, all right, people that have the, the the conception or the perception that oh, they live in their best life, but at the end of the day, man, the whole purpose. For living, especially if you're a man, is to fear the Lord and keep his commandments. As a man, you have a very high position or you have a, a major responsibility if the Lord uh, shines this light upon you as we're reading. And, and, that, and that, that thing is to do what, man? Please the Lord and, and with the hopes of being saved from all the bullshit that's about to come to this place, man. All right. And, 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 I, and I'm, not, I'm not saying bullshit is in a bad thing, but I'm just saying like you're going to uh, two thirds of our people are going to be caught up in, in, in some shit, man. All right. 
And if you know how to prevent yourself from being caught up in mischief, then why won't you do it, man? All right. But see, only at this particular time, the hopeful, humble, fearful elect is the only ones that's going to take heed to prevent themselves from being caught up in the wrath of the Lord, man. All right. Now, this is John 8 and 12. Now, it says, all right, let's read um, Isaiah 60 once again. It says, Arise, shine, for the light is come, and the glory of the Lord Yahweh, Yahweh is risen upon thee. All right, arise and shine, for the light is come. Now, who's the light? Yahweh Shai is the light. Let's, let's prove it. John 8 and 12. Then spake Yahweh Shai again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. Boom. There you have it. Yahweh Shai just said, it's written in red, I am the light of the world. And what does he mean by that? He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. All right. So the Lord say he that followeth me, meaning that you're going to have to hey, be paying attention to the statute, laws and commandments, meaning that you're going to have to pay attention to the man that the Lord have set up, meaning that you're going to have to be like the church of Berea and do a diligent search, meaning that the Lord is all about hey, your, your faith, man, your faith being tested and also you proving Hey, what the meaning of faith, man? And you proving the perfect will of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai, man. Being in that spirit of having a renewed mind, man. All right, because once we come, at once, hey, once it said we have received this, that we become followers, and we have received this light. And guess what that means, man? That that means that that's the renewing of your mind. You're not no longer walking in darkness, man. You're not uh, handling business uh, discrafty or or or, or dis, uh, uh, honestly handling the business of the heavenly Father, man. All right, we're in the mind frame of proving things right, man. All right, now um, we just proved that Yahweh Shai is the light that's come into the world, and that's the way that you're going to see the glory of the Lord upon you because you become a follower of Yahweh Shai Hamashiach. All right, and when you become a follower, it's going to be known, man. People are going to look and be like, "Hey, you're that guy that's always wearing uh, those garments and fringes, and hey, you're that guy that be that, that always be with those." They, they'll be like, you and those guys be on the on the highways and byways. Uh, and they'll be like, I think y'all are Israelites. And we always say, nigga, you an Israelite. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We always, I, I know we always tell our people that, man, because they'll be like, hey, ain't y'all the Israelites? And if it's a Jake, we'll be like, nigga, you an Israelite. We'll say nigga, but you know, we'll be like, bro, you an Israelite, you know? And then, you know, this is this is a, our customs, man, that, we, that we're supposed to know, man. All right? But uh, another scripture that popped in my head, it says, If our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, and whom the God of this world has blinded their minds. Going back into Job 9 and 24, and the God of this world is Esau, man, the wicked, man. All right? Pursuing in Malachi 1 and 4, they have the power of this world, man. All right? And this is why the gospel could be lost, man, because our people, they don't take heed, they don't take consideration. And, then they, and at the end of the day, man, the Lord has their minds blinded from receiving this gospel anyway. But to the hopeful, humble, fearful elect, our eyes are open and our eyes can see it. So guess what we do on an everyday basis? We take heed, man. We make sure that we're staying occupied. And we're going to get that one as well, too. And Sirach, we're being occupied in the Holy Scriptures of the Heavenly Father, man. Because when you're occupied in the Scriptures, guess what? You're not going to be, you're not going to succumb to that darkness, man. You're not going to be wavering back and forth from, hey, man, let me... Hang out in this darkness for a little while, but I'm going to step back into the light because you know that the Lord says, hey, there's no such thing as no lukewarm, man. All right. The Lord is not dealing with that lukewarm spirit, man. You're going to be hot or you're going to be cold for this gospel, for this ministry, for this truth. All right. Now, Isaiah 16 and 2, it says, behold, the darkness, for behold, the darkness shall cover the earth and gross darkness, the people. But the Lord, Yahweh, shall arise upon thee and his glory shall be seen upon thee. And how is that glory going to be seen upon thee? Hey, because because hey, we converted our minds back. Uh, let's get Romans 12 real quick. All right. Because we renewed our minds. Let me say that. Now, it says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of Yahweh. And this is also mercy that we've been able to receive this glorious gospel because the Lord has could have kept us in that state of mind frame of being darkness, man. All right. He could have kept us because we just read that darkness has covered the earth and in gross darkness, the people. All right. At one point in time, we were in that gross darkness, but once the Lord thought something of us, that he took that gross darkness over, uh, away from us, man. All right, He gave us the light, that way we can be able to see in the darkness. Yeah, we're still uh, uh, surrounded by darkness, but guess what? As that saying goes, you know, that, that, that spiritual, that Negro spiritual, people used to sing, this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. All right, and we have this little light, this this gospel, this glorious gospel, and we're followers of Yahweh Shah Hamashiach. All right, we're, we're we're paying attention to the men that the Lord have set up, and and, and said, hey, this is the way to serve the Lord. So with this little light that we have, guess what we're going to do? We're going to let it shine, man, because that glorious gospel of the Lord is going to be seen upon the hopeful, humble, fearful elect, man. 
All right. Now it says, by the mercies of Yahweh, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto Yahweh, which is your reasonable service. And how do we present our bodies as a living sacrifice? We pray, we study, we fast. All right. We're on the highways and byways. We're doing everything that the Lord is commanding us to do to the best of our abilities. Going back into having that fear of the Lord, man. All right. Because it, presenting your bodies as a living sacrifice is a sign of what? And be not conformed to this world. But be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. So this is presenting your bodies as a living sacrifice. This is the transformation of the renewing of your mind. Yeah, at one point in time before the Lord had given us this gospel, all right, and gave us the statute of laws and commandments, and, and you might have been like, oh, man, I'm just going to chill on the weekends or, man, I'm just going to relax. I'm just going to chill. But once you become in this gospel, you understand Micah 2 and 10, and this is not our rest. We're not going to get any rest here. There's no such thing as chill. Let's have fun. And we're, we're serving a, a, a so we're serving a, a prison a sentence, man. All right. The Lord didn't put us under this uh, punishment for us to be enjoying it, man. The Lord put us under this punishment for us to observe and pay attention. And inevitably, a, as we read now, if the Lord has, mer has had mercy upon us, man, we're going to be the ones in that renewed state of mind in the midst of all this darkness that's going to be like, hey, man, wait a minute. This ain't this is not paradise. This ain't the 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 the, the so-called greatest kingdom there is, man. This is a fucking bamboozle. This is a hoax, man. You're gonna start realizing that this is the that, that Esau, your enemy, is your first year enemy, but he's the devil, man. All right, he's the one that's trying to keep you in that gross darkness, man. All right, he's the one, as we made mention of uh Second Corinthians, hey, and if your gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, and whom the God of this world, he's the God of this world, man. All right, and, and the thing about this goddamn devil, man, as the scriptures tell us, this devil, he knows that the most high exists, and they tremble. Matter of fact, let's finish this real quick. I'm trying to find that. Now, this is uh, Romans 12, and it says, And be not conformed to this world, and be not trans and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that ye that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of Yahweh. All right, and, and this is how the whole for humble, fearful elect, being in that light. We prove the perfect will of the Most High by what? By crying aloud and despairing not, by letting our people know, giving them warning from the Lord, giving them as, as we're in the uh, mind frame of revelation, revealing things before they happen, man. Because one thing about the prophets, and this is why people despise the prophets, because the prophets were pretty much, as they said, the prophets of doom. They try to uh, depict us as the prophets of doom, but hey, we're doing the job of the Heavenly Father to let our people know that nothing is coming good to this place, man. Especially if you're in the mind frame of the world, man. If you're a follower of, of, of your enemy and of the world, because the Lord said, learn out the ways of the heathen. And most of our people are in the heathenistic customs and heathenistic ways instead of following the ways of Yahweh, Yahweh Shai. Pursuing back to John 8 and 12, because hey, Yahweh Shai represents the light of the world, man. All right. And that's the only way that you're going to have life, man. All right. So if you're outside of that, then you're anti-life, man. All right. Because Esau and all these fucking heathens, hey, they represent death, man. Because uh, at the end of the day, they entice you to uh, uh, trans, uh, transgressing the laws and, 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 and pursuing the Romans, what, 6 and 23, a tr transgression of the law, hey, the wages of sin, roughly paraphrasing, is death, man. All right. And most of our people are gambling with death on an everyday basis, man. Gambling with sinning. Because guess what? People are, uh, they don't consider the high holy days. They don't consider the Sabbath, man. All right? How the Sabbath changes with the moon and whatnot. And, it, and that puts you in a, in a category of consistently going off, man. Not considering the ways of the Heavenly Father. All right? Now, let's read, um, I believe that's James that I was going to that I was gonna get about these devils. They know the most high exists and they tremble. But see, they try to play as if, um, uh, uh, um, as if uh, the Lord doesn't exist, man, as if the Lord is not going to redeem the ones that's going to call upon him, man. All right. This is a part of a uh, being uh, not conformed to this world because this devil has already conformed two thirds of our people to believe that. It, first of all, in Jesus Christ, he got them people believing in Jesus. All right. He has people just minds just totally destroyed, man. But inevitably, that's the spirit of the Lord that has you in that blindness pursuing the Romans 11 and uh, 7 and 8. Now, this is James 2 and 19. And now, it says, Thou believest that there is one power, Yahweh, thou doest well. The devils also believe and tremble. So this lets you know that these goddamn devils, they like to play as if they are, oh, there's no most high. And, oh, uh, as the scriptures tell us in Psalms, I'll never be an adversary. This is the mind frame of the devil, the proudness of the devils. Pursuing the Psalms chapter 10, when this devil is saying he, he's, he, he will never be an adversary. He will never be moved, man. All right. 
But Blue Dude A, hey, this devil tried to act as if he's the most high. He presented himself as the most high, but he knows that Yahweh and his only begotten son exists, man. This is why this devil has a doomsday clock. This is why this devil is moving at warp speed. All right? And, but the hopeful, humble, the fearful, the legacy says, hey, we know that there's one power we do as well. All right? Because we truly believe in the Heavenly Father. We're proving the perfect will of the Heavenly Father and his only begotten son, man. And that goes back into having faith as well, man. All right? But see, these devils, they know that the most high exists and, and they're trembling, man. All right? Because they know that their time is short, man. This is why, as, as we always bring out Revelation 12 and 12, this devil is in, in the mind frame and coming down with the great wrath, man, because he knows that his time is short. He knows that he has bounds that he cannot pass, man. It's only our people, the Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans that are in the mind frame are not considering because they're too busy in the house of Murph having a good old goddamn time, man. All right? Not paying attention to, guess what? The house of Murph is going to fucking crawl, crash and burn on you, man. All right? And this is not the time to be uh, found in the house of mirth. This is the time to be found in the house of mourning, man. All right? Because truly, truly and truly, man, as we read, man, gross darkness has influenced the mind frame of two-thirds of our people. Pretty much the mind frame of this world is in, in, in the world operates in darkness. Let's just say that, man. All right? And only the hopeful, humble, fearful, elect, all right, are going to be the ones that can see through the bullshit, man, through the spirit of the Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son. Now, let's get... um. Let's get uh, uh let's get Sirach 39. And the importance of being what? Occupied in the spirit, man. Because you we, we read the scriptures because they were for our they're, they're for our learning, man. We read the scriptures because they give us that 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 strength, man, the comfort, man, to get us through, man, all the bullshit that we have to in, in, endure on an everyday basis. Now, this is uh Sirach chapter 39 and 1, Ecclesiasticus. It says, But he that giveth his mind to the law of the most high and is occupied in the meditation thereof will seek will seek out the wisdom of all the ancient and be occupied in prophecies, all right? And if you're occupied in prophecies, guess what? You're speaking about the Lord, Yahweh Shah Mashiach, because the Lord said he is the spirit of prophecy, man. All right, let's get that very quickly. I think that's what? Revelation chapter uh, 19 and uh, uh, 10, it says, I fell at his feet to worship him, and he said unto me, See thou do it not. I am thy fellow servant and of thy brethren that have the testimony of Yahweh Shai. Worship Yahweh, for the testimony of Yahweh Shai is the spirit of prophecy. All right, so you got all these people out here saying, "Oh man, I love the Lord," but they're not even speaking on prophecy. All right, so you can't even mention the Lord Yahweh Shai Mashiach if you're not speaking about prophecies, because that was his whole testimony, man. That's the whole purpose of being a follower of Yahweh Shai Mashiach, man. Continuing to speak the prophecies, man. Continuing to speak that there's no rest coming to this place. Continuing to speak that Yahweh Shai is, is going to come back and redeem, which is another uh, uh, another title for Yahweh Shai Hamashiach, the Redeemer. He's gonna who's he gonna redeem, man? He's gonna redeem the followers, man. He's gonna redeem the hopeful, humble, fearful elect, the ones that took time out, that took heed to this glorious gospel, man. All right. So hey, if you're not speaking about prophecy, all right, and, and, and but yet you're speaking about the Lord and the Savior. But you're not speaking about prophecy, then what are you talking about, man? Because just, as, as as we just read, read the testimony of Yahweh Shai is the spirit of prophecy. And what is Great Millstone always known for doing? Prophesying. All right? Makes sense, man. All right? But common sense ain't always common, and we got to understand that. All right? Because we may mention the two-thirds. We got to understand that out of, out, of three, out, of, out of three people, man, two of them people are, 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 are going to be against the Heavenly Father and, and, gonna, and, and are going to be against... The right ways to serve the Heavenly Father, man. All right? There's only going to be that one that stands alone, man. All right? And when you think about if you got three people and how two-thirds, all right, are going to be uh, pretty much their mind frame is set up for destruction, man. All right? And, um, then the scriptures say, can two walk, walk together except they be in agreed? Because guess what? Them two-thirds that make up the two-third cl club, and hey, these niggas don't even get along. They don't believe in the same thing. But the only thing they do believe is that we're going to conspire against that one that's, that's saying that the Heavenly Father name is Yahweh Shai. And I mean, the Heavenly Father name is Yahweh. His only begotten son name is Yahweh Shai. The one that's, that's trying to uh, do the correct thing. They're, they'll conspire together to, um, you know, uh, to be against you, man. All right. But it's cool, man, because the Lord already told us, man. All right. That that this is how it's going to be. This, uh, this, you know what I'm saying? The hope, humble, fearful, elect, humbly, man. We say that. We we see it, man, because the Lord has given us the vision to see it. All right. Now, um, once again, 
Let's go back to Sirach chapter 39 and 1. But he that giveth his mind to the law of the Most High and is occupied in the meditation thereof will seek out the wisdom of all the ancient and be occupied in prophecies. And where do you find prophecies? And where do you find the laws at? All right, you find them right here in this book, man, the scriptures, man. All right? And these laws were only given until the nation of Israel, man. How do we know that? How do we know that? All right, Psalms chapter 147, 19 and 20. What does the Lord say? It says, he show up his, his word unto Jacob, his statutes and his judgments unto Israel. All right. So the Lord is that he show up his word unto Jacob. This is a word with this glorious gospel is only given to the Israelites to see his statutes and his judgments unto Israel. He have not dealt so with any nation and as for his judgments, they have not known him. Praise the praise ye the Lord, Yahweh. All right. So that's the clear cut. The Lord is only dealing with the nation of Israel, man. Because it was very specific. It said he showed up his word and his judgments unto Israel. He has not dealt with any nation. All right. So this is this is all these are, are just pointers to show that the Lord is only dealing with the, 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 the Negroes, Latinos, the Native Americans. And at this particular time, the Lord is only focused on the elect right now, man, because two thirds of our people are in that gross darkness, man. All right. They don't want to be followers of Yahweh Shah Mashiach because they're too busy following all the fucking idols on their Twitter, Snapchat, uh, Facebook, whatever they can go uh, follow uh, people at, man. All right. This this has become a, a, a society of um, of minions, so to speak, man. All right. And, and, and minions for the wrong people, man. All right. You've got people that are followers of, of Michael Jordan, LeBron James, uh, 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 who, who, who are some of the celebrities that people like to, to follow. Uh, you got people that are following these goddamn Harlots such as uh, Megan the Stallion, all right, a uh, sexy red or whoever, our right, followers of Drake, Rick Ross, and you know just all this madness, man. All right, all these goddamn so-called celebrities, man. But if they're not speaking this word right here, then guess what? Hey, you're that multitude uh, born in vain, man. Uh, as, as, as the scriptures say, roughly paraphrasing, I believe that's in Exodus. Do not follow a multitude to do wickedness. All right, let's see if I can find it. Is that Exodus? Uh. Uh, uh, what is that? Let me, let me, uh, Shalaki is on my mind, so <laughs> I'm gonna be thinking about it. Is that, uh, the book of, uh, Exodus chapter? Is that 23 and 2? Let's see, is that right? Yes, Barakataya Bashim man. And this is the, this is the mind frame of our people, man. Our scriptures say, Thou shalt not, thou shalt not follow a multitude to do evil. Neither shalt thou speak in a cause to decline after many to rest judgment. So it says, thou shalt not follow a multitude to do evil. All right? And anytime most of our people, if you're a follower, all these bitches twerking up. You're a follower, all these gang, gang, gang niggas, man. What are they, what are they promoting? They're promoting evilness, man. All right? They're promoting wickedness, man. All right? And this is why the scriptures tell us too, woe to those that put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. Because you have our people saying, man, ain't nothing wrong with twerking. Ain't nothing wrong with showing, um, with, with, with following this person because they got guns and they got drugs and they showing you how to make money and stuff of that nature. But guess what? If you're following a multitude of people, if they got two point something million followers and they all doing the same thing, guess what? You're following a multitude of people to do wickedness, man. I don't give a damn if any number 500,000, man. 200,000. Guess what? That's a multitude of people that's talking about wickedness, man. All right? You even if you following somebody that's got 1.1.5 million people and they showing you how to make abominable foods. Guess what? You're following a multitude to do wickedness, man. All right? And instead of tapping in that follow button and following the apostles and the elders and the sincere believers of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, and our people to follow all type of goddamn wickedness, man. All type of bullshit. Instead of following the true uh, glorious gospel, uh, the true ways of the Heavenly Father. But um, as I said, man, I just want to do a quick short video. And I pray that this video has been edifying and good nourishment to the house of David. And I pray that, hey, hey, it's time to follow the Lord, man. How time to wake out of sleep, man. All right. So um, with that being said, I want to close by saying, call Halayim La Yahweh, Bahasham Yahweh Shai, Bahasham Rekaha Kodash. Double honors to our apostles, our elders, our bishops here at Great Millstone for teaching us this truth and who rule well. And shalom to all you brothers across the four corners of this earth, pushing this word with all righteousness and sincerity. Until the next time, I do say shalom.